Hello there. It's nice to see you again. Last time, we spoke about glycolysis, an anaerobic pathway that resulted in a net gain of 2 ATP, 2 NADH plus H pluses, and the formation of 2 pyruvate. Even though we get quick bursts of energy from this system, this anaerobic pathway is unable to keep up with the amount of ATP needed for long bouts of exercise. In order to keep exercising, the body will need to tap into the aerobic power systems, starting with the Krebs cycle. The key for entry is for pyruvate to go through the ebden meyerhoff pathway. In this pathway, pyruvate plus NAD plus plus coenzyme A use pyruvate dehydrogenates to form acetyl-CoA plus carbon dioxide plus NADH plus H plus. Now that the 3-carbon pyruvate has made 2-carbon acetyl-CoA, it can enter into the mitochondria to the Krebs cycle. Acetyl-CoA will go through several steps that break down acids and form electron carriers in the process by using dehydrogenases. The acids we would want to focus on are isocitric acid, alpha-ketoglutaric acid, succinic acid, and malic acid. By using dehydrogenases, a total of three NADH plus H pluses and one FADH2 are produced. There is one ATP produced through the Krebs cycle by succinyl-CoA. Succinyl-CoA uses succinate-CoA synthase to move one phosphate from guanosine triphosphate to adenosine diphosphate to produce adenosine triphosphate. Since there are two pyruvates produced by every one glucose molecule, the Krebs cycle happens two times for each glucose molecule. Two cycles of the Krebs cycle will give us a grand total of six NADH plus H pluses, two FADH2s, and two ATPs. Our last energy system, the electron transfer chain, will use these electron carriers to produce a lot of ATPs.